Hey everybody, Ryan Dossie, and in today's video, I wanna give you a For Dummies level simple walkthrough of how to use ReSimply or a CRM if you've never used one. This is probably the most requested video that I've ever gotten, so let's dive right in. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you've created or are creating a ReSimply account while we're walking through this. I'm gonna show you how to go through literally creating a lead and walking it through the various steps to the point of getting the deal closed. So right here in ReSimply, the first thing you're gonna have to do is either set up your web form or connect it to your website or set up your tracking phone numbers. Now, ReSimply will actually connect to an investor care at site for you. They're who I personally use for all of my like SEO leads and credibility, or you're gonna set up a tracking number. Tracking numbers are gonna be done right here through manage numbers. It's really straightforward. You can come in, buy a number, pick whatever zip code you like. Um, they don't have the one I throw in for a demo, of course. If you ever have that happen, just reach out to support and they'll get you one, but literally go through, buy a number. Now you do have to set up a flow for it, which you'll assign in this section. Let me show you what that is real quick. All the flow does is you're basically telling it what to do when somebody calls. So if we go into add call flow here, um, Always make sure you turn the calls will be recorded button on. I think it's a really smart policy as a business to record your inbound calls. Do your own research about what's legal or not in your state. Make sure this is set to show the caller ID number. If not on your caller ID, it's gonna show your ReSimply tracking number, which when you then go to try to call that person back, you'll be calling yourself. So you're gonna call this what you want, and then you're simply gonna pick what you wanna do here. I personally don't like IVRs. That's like the press one to do this, press two to do that. And I also don't like it greeting the caller of like, hi, somebody will be with you shortly or anything. Our goal is to come across like a local kind of small mom and pop business. So we're gonna leave those off. But when it comes to the call forwarding, um, I would send this to Call Porter, their call center that I own, they take all my inbound calls. So I would put my phone number in there. I'm not gonna use a whisper message or anything. One thing I do like doing is uh, putting in an SMS that automatically goes out if we miss their call or if they call in after hours. Something really straightforward like, hey, sorry, we missed you. Um, somebody from our team will be in touch shortly. Thanks, you know, uh, XYZ Home Buyers, whatever your brand name is. I also highly recommend on repeat callers that if you're using a call center, you have that either go to your cell phone or your acquisitions manager. That way if like how this can work in a bad way, if you don't have this set up, you call a seller, they try to call you right back, they get call Porter who puts the lead in, you try to call the seller right back, they miss it, they call, they get call Porter. It gets really frustrating for them really quickly. So you could do something like if they call back again, have them go to your cell phone number or an acquisitions cell phone, cell phone number. Now, once the leads are, or once you actually have your tracking numbers set up, when somebody calls you, it's gonna automatically get entered into the CRM with the recording of that phone call, assuming you have this toggled on. Or um, if you're not taking your own calls, if you're using an answering service, you're gonna give them this web form here and they're gonna go through and fill out these details and click add a lead, which would then get it added to your CRM. So that would be right here under active leads, which is what we're gonna focus on for right now. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna walk you through moving somebody kind of down the pipeline here from you haven't talked to them to you got them on the phone to you got them over to an appointment you made an offer, you got the property under contract, and you either bought it or wholesaled it at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and click add lead. Basically, you would be doing this if you don't have a call center that's taking your calls and you're going through and you're working your own leads at this point. So I'm just gonna throw in uh, my info here for the uh, sake of this video. Uh, almost gave all of you my cell phone number, <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. 
Um, throw in an email here. And we're going to say that I came from direct mail. Um, if you have tracking numbers tied to like campaigns, that's where that would show up. And for address, uh, we're going to do my old house in Beach Grove, Indiana. And you can see it pulls in um, owner info, beds, baths, year built, estimated value, all that stuff. Now, take all of this with a grain of salt. Um, for instance, they say my house has no bathrooms. I lived there for five years. I can assure you it had one. <laughs> so um, you might have to kind of correct some of that stuff. Is there a garage? No. So this is where I want to give you kind of like my first piece of super actionable advice. Um, this like no contact made section is basically they called in, left a voicemail, they filled out a form on your website, they got your answering service, basically you haven't talked to them. So we're gonna go ahead and just click add lead and that's gonna put this in this no contact made status. So your goal as an investor is to move everything from left to right. So we're gonna pull this one back up. Now, we're gonna say that I am going and calling this person to try to get more info, ideally try to get them to an appointment and make them an offer so that I can buy their house. Now, under actions here, you've got this little phone icon that's gonna to connect to, um, they call it VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. Basically, I can call through my computer without having to use my cell phone. I highly, highly recommend, whether it's just you or you have staff, that all of your inbound and outbound calls are done through Resimply. That way you have recordings of everything. So if you're like, wow, um, I think that offer sucked, you can listen back to it and realize, okay, where did I go wrong, right? Or let's say you forgot to take notes, what happened on that call, you can go back and listen to it. So we can click this call button right here can pick the caller ID that's going to show up and click make call. And then my browser would literally start calling my cell phone over here um, and then uploading the recording of that call. So that's how we're going to actually place a call through Resimply. Now, as I'm in here um, working on this lead, so we're going to click actions and we're going to click this little pencil, uh, which is the edit button first like big piece of advice I've got for you guys don't go through these question by question line by line and just like ram this person through a script like, oh how motivated are you right the biggest piece of advice I can give you around this is open-ended questions don't give them a bunch of yes or no questions because they start to feel like they're going through a script our number one goal is to get them talking to get them to feel comfortable where they open up about details about the situation or the property so for instance, I'm not gonna just be like, okay, how much are you looking to sell the house for? That's a horrible first question. Hey, my name is Ryan. Um, I got the form you filled out here on the website about the property over in Beach Grove at 348 North 17th. What can you tell me about the house? Any repairs or updates that need to be made? What do I need to know about you or the situation? How soon are you looking to move, right? That's so much better than like, okay, how many beds? How many baths? What year was it built? Okay, what do you owe on it? What would you like to get out of it? Is that the least you'd accept? You see what I'm saying? Investors, I feel like oftentimes forget that they're dealing with people and that rapport and coming across like a human is super important. So let's say that, uh, you know, had a pretty good conversation with myself, <laughs> which was, I guess was kind of a weird way to set this up. And I'm asking, you know, 150,000 uh, bucks. I owe 75 grand. Um, I do think how soon are you looking to sell is a great question. Cause if they say, oh, in two years, they might not necessarily be super motivated. Whereas if they say, you know, as fast as possible, right? But I'm not gonna like walk them through this drop down. Would you say ASAP or not sure, or sometime in the next few months? Again, I'm trying to have this be very conversational. I'm not ever asking a question like this. Have you received any past due notice from the lender? I can pull all of that on my own. Um, even like getting into all of this kind of stuff on a call, people really start to feel um, like they're being pushed through a script, right? Now, if you make any changes and you want to save them, you do have to click this edit lead button here on the bottom. So let's assume I called this seller. I got them on the phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to contact made, which I clicked that drop down and I then click next. 
Um, I'm going to leave any tasks that are there. And that's uh, I've done other videos on tasks, so I won't dive into that now. But let's assume that the owner of this property wanted to, say, check with his tenant before um, he would let me come out there to make an offer. So I'm either going to have a task or some sort of a follow up assigned here. You can actually automatically assign um, what these are based off of what status it's in. I highly recommend going through and tweaking these for yourself um, because I personally wouldn't do several of these for the drop downs that we've been in. So I might have something as simple as, you know, call back on Monday and have that set for, you know, Monday at whatever time I told them I'd call and uh, I'm going to assign that to myself. So then when I'm looking at this lead, I can see, uh, you know, I've got this call back on Monday. That's the one I just added. So let's assume that it's now Monday and I am going and calling this seller back. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hop up into here. I'm going to click the phone. I'm going to go through a click call. I'm going to pick what the caller ID is and I'm going to trigger the phone call. Now, if they don't answer, I do recommend leaving a voicemail. I also recommend coming in here, clicking on the little text looking guy, clicking SMS, and then doing like a, you know, hey Ryan, it's Ryan with XYZ home buyers. Sorry, I missed you. Give me a call when you can, right? Um, when you can. Uh, so I highly recommend if you call them and they don't answer, leave a voicemail and also flick them a text. So let's assume though that Ryan picked up, said, hey, I spoke with the tenant um, and you can come out on Wednesday. So I'm going to click over here to tasks and appointments. I'm going to click add appointments. I'm going to pick Wednesday for the title. I always recommend putting the address and I'll show you why here in a second. Going to pick who it gets assigned to. So yourself or if you have staff, right, whoever that would be. And I'm going to click save appointment. Um, oh, got to pick a start and end time. So uh, say my appointment's going to be at 9 a.m. I always do about an hour, so 9 to 10. If you wrap up early, that gives you time to potentially commute to your next appointment. I'll click save. Now, this is why I recommend that you name it um, based off of the address. So when you click on the calendar view up here, it's going to show you for the upcoming week what appointments you have coming up. So this is the one I just set. So whether it's you or an acquisitions manager, they can very quickly look at this. Okay, 348 North 17th Avenue, throw that into their Google Maps and they are good to go. Now, let's assume I was out there on Wednesday, the appointment went well, and I'm going to make an offer. Now, I don't want to get into this too much, but I recommend that you note absolutely everything. I'm talking down to like, you know, his cat's name was Jazz, right? reason being those are all things that you can then use to follow up with later as like rapport that you've built so you know if they mention they're planning on taking a trip when you call them back next time and you know that trip has already happened because you had notes on it instead of starting the call off with hey it's me ryan did you want to sell your house for less yet i'm starting the call off with hey how was vancouver right um, I come across like a human, not somebody who's just trying to get something out of them. So I recommend having all of that in here in the notes section. I also recommend when you're out there meeting with the seller, take pictures with your iPhone, upload all of them into a Google Photos album and throw those links in here as well. Also recommend putting in how you came up with your offer. Um, I use the 75% rule in my own business, but put all of that in here. That way it's just painfully clear what's going on with this lead. You know, when you only have 10 or 15, it's pretty easy to keep track of like, oh yeah, what was going on with North 17th? And my personal CRM right now, we have over 300 leads active. If one of my employees tells me like, oh, this is going on with so-and-so and I remember it, I know they're full of it <laughs> because there's way too many people to remember what's going on or where we were at with all of them. Even if it's just you, it's a good habit to get into that practice. That way when you hire employees, they're simply doing what you've already been doing. It's really hard to bring somebody in and be like, hey, uh, can you do a better job at this than I did, right? They're, they're not going to value your business more than you value your business. So uh, I'll hop off my soapbox. Now, the other thing I've got to do is move this over to appointment set. 
Um, we did book the appointment under appointments, but in order to move it through, um, we do have to change that drop down, and I'm going to use the existing appointment that I already booked and update. So we're now in appointment set. So if we go under active leads, we can see I started out in no contact. I then got the seller on the phone, changed it to contact made. They wanted to chat with their seller or their uh, tenant, excuse me. Follow it up again, got it to an appointment, which has moved it to here. Now we need to move this over to the offers made tab. Now this is one way that I hold my team personally accountable. So if I look and see that we had 10 appointments, but only two offers made, I'm like, guys, what the heck? Why are we not making offers on 80% of our opportunities, right? I'm a big believer in run appointments with people, regardless of what they're asking, regardless of whether or not you think they're motivated or not. If you followed me online for any length of time, you've seen that we buy a lot of nice properties that don't need a ton of work. And we get that by working all of our leads and assuming the sale, not like prejudging or, oh, that one's not worth my time, right? So I've got this in appointment set. It's now time for me to go in and make an offer. So I'm gonna come in, click on this drop down, and move it over to offers made. And I'm gonna say that my offer was, uh, you know, 100,000 bucks. Now, another thing that I really, really recommend when you're making your offers, if the most you can pay is 100,000 bucks, don't start there. Um, so we use the 75% rule and we typically try to budget about an $8,000 profit margin. But when I'm making my initial offer, I'm starting below that by sometimes as much as five, 10,000 bucks. That way, if I get a better deal, I get to make more money on it. The other thing too, if you give your best offer right out of the gate, even if they hit you with that whole, like, oh, I'm not going to play games. I'm not going to do the whole back and forth thing. Right. If you go and just give them everything you've got, what reason do you have to call them back? Like, hey, just calling you back to tell you that I still can't pay more doesn't make much sense. So we've gone ahead in and we've made the offer on this. Now, likely they're not going to accept the initial offer. Um, they're gonna wanna talk it over with their spouse, their kids, whatever. So you're gonna be headed over here into your tasks and you're likely going to be setting extra tasks for yourself to follow up with that person at a later date. And normally how I do this, we're pretty aggressive in our initial follow-up. So we'll make the offer over the phone, give them a day or two and touch base, right? We try to get everybody an offer in writing, which you can actually do contracts through Resimply, um, which I think is probably a different video in and of itself, but that's right here under the e-sign tab. You can upload a template and then put the fields on it, same way you would like DocuSign or something like that. Um, but Let's say that, you know, hooray, hooray, uh, seller called me back or I called the seller back and they said, hey, you know, we've got a deal uh, if you can do 101,000 bucks. So I'm gonna put 101,000 bucks in here and I'm gonna put in what day this is supposed to close and click update status. Now, when we come back in here into active leads, we can now see that it's in one of the best columns under contract, meaning we're really, really close to getting this thing closed. It's now just time to do our due diligence, get inspections done, find a buyer if we're wholesaling it, raise private money or use our own cash to buy it if we're planning on keeping it. For the sake of this example, um, I'm gonna walk you guys through what an assignment on this would look like. So we're gonna click on under contract. We're gonna move this over to assign to buyer. And we're going to say that I'm getting 8,000 bucks and update status. Now we can now see that probably just like you're expecting, it's now under the assigned to buyer tab. And let's assume the 30th has passed and we have closed. So I'm going to move this over to sold now. And we're going to say it was a wholesale deal and we sold the property for 109,000 uh, bucks. I don't know that it'll let me pick a sold date in the future, but I'll try it. Um, so we're gonna click update status. So we now see it moved it over to sold. Now, when we're in the sold section before we pick that under investment type, 
Um, you can also move it to inventory if it's going to be a fix and flip or a rental or something of that nature, uh, which moves it under this properties tab into inventory. Otherwise, under the sold tab, we can see all of the deals you've done, how long they took, all kinds of good data. I know that this video was a little bit longer than what you're probably used to from me, but I was getting a lot of people asking me, hey, how do I use the CRM you use like for dummies level simple? This should be enough to get you dangerous and have you comfortable, but also have you start really working your leads like a pro. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Again, my name is Ryan Dossie. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Talk to you next time.